one. All right, welcome in Couch Guy Sports Podcast. This is episode 246. Diego, myself, Jared here. CouchGuysports.com, of course, presents the podcast. All of the written content on CouchGuysports.com. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, we put all this stuff on the Couch Guy Sports YouTube channel. If you hear soccer in the background, Diego uh, is watching his pride and joy, uh, the <laughs> Colombian so- national soccer. No, keep it on. I don't care. I'm just telling people. It's the Colombian national soccer team. Um, we are recording on Thursday, March 24th, and tonight is a big qualifier night. The U.S. men's national team plays later, and Diego and I are staying up for that, too. Um, but, yeah, Diego's boys are on right now as we speak, so he might scream in the middle of the episode, and that's okay. <laughs> we support it. This is now a pro soccer podcast since Nick left, so um, we support the random screaming and shouts and oohs and ahs and grunts and all that good stuff. That was a random almost goal. <laughs> 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 those on the video you saw it on the audio he just like he just flinched there's his tv's behind him i think so like he yes. just like turned around and flinched and it's literally it's, be, it's literally so for the video people a peak oh yeah there you go there's a setup yeah, right nice. to my right to my uh right to your right yeah. yeah so for those of you who don't know i'm putting an addition on my house starting in may and i'm getting a nice new office out of it like i'm getting a dedicated to me space which is great um i know for a fact i will have like my desk and then facing a wall and the TV will be mounted on the other side of the wall. So I know when this happens and it'll probably be like the fall when it's done, I'm going to be the person that will sit here and records this podcast and looks over the camera for you video people watching games at the same time. So just that, that just prepare yourself for that. There's that's going to happen. <laughs> but you know what? One perk, Diego, one big perk for me of the TV in the office is like summertime and like in the fall, if there's day baseball on, I can watch it while well, I can working. imagine. And it's just going to be clutch. And I can't wait. Because right now I do like the, you know, my bosses know I do this. I do like the, I have a dual setup. I got monitors in my laptop for work because I work at home. And so like one screen will be the baseball games or whatever's on. One screen will be my work and then I'm my laptop screen. So like mm-hmm. I watch it anyway, but it slows down your computer. And, you know, I want to be as productive as possible for my job. So um, need, need a TV in my office is really the, the story there. But, um, but yeah, so we got a lot to talk about. Of course, iTunes, Spotify follows there too. Big help. Um, forgot to put that plug out there. CGS Boston Pod on Twitter. Again, we're, we're back with the new Twitter account. I'll keep blaming Nick Ford. He got us suspended, even though it really wasn't his fault. It's baseball's fault. Um, we're gonna start. Make sure you follow. Make sure you follow. We need to get that we've, following we, going. We, we've we've cranked up a little bit. Uh, we're getting it back to where it was. Yeah, Nick tweeted out a baseball hub highlight. Might have been a golf highlight in there too. And those two sports are big no nos for people sharing their content. And they just redacted and they just can, they just suspended it and they never gave it back to us. So uh, we started from scratch, but go follow CGS Boston pod. Um, or is it CGS boss pod? I don't even remember what the new handle is. It's, C- um, it's a CGS Boston pod. I was right. Okay. See tonight, my gut has been right. And I keep trying to change it. I, I thought it was like 245, 246. I don't know. My gut's right. Got it. Um, all right. Let's, let's start with the Celtics. They're like the hot topic going on yep. now, right now. Um, They've won a lot of base, a lot of uh, basketball games since January. A lot. I think they've lost like four basketball games since January. Um, in that time span, Jason Tatum's averaging th- over 30 points a game. Jalen Brown's right around the same mm-hmm. mark. Uh, Marcus Smart has had the most assists in his career in that time frame. Um, and Ime Odoka is primed to be coach of the year candidate. He- top of the list. Um, as we record this, Diego, the Celtics are a game and a half out of the one seed in the East. So since January, just a real quick stat out there powered by statnews.com. So if you haven't checked out that website, make sure you check it out. The Boston Celtics are officially 20 and six since January 10th of 2022. It's nuts. And like those losses are like pretty much good games. Like the Mavs game when they retired KG's number, probably should have won that game, right? Like, and then they're they're blowing out good teams. Like their last five games have been against like good teams. Look at the look what they did to the Jazz last night, and the Jazz mm-hmm. are a good playoff team. Very look good. Look what team. they did to the Warriors, like when they were out in Golden State. Like it's just it's nuts what they're doing. It's on a pace like I've never seen. And you know this is what a lot of people were preaching. Like you need to give it time. Like the the issue that people forget too with the Celtics Diego is it's been a transition, right? Danny Ainge put this team together, Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hayward, Decker, right? It didn't work. So they had to make it work with something else. 
and that's where it came into the okay you had to find mm-hmm. isaiah thomas group shout out to him you got a contract for the rest of the season from the Charlotte hornets yeah isaiah well thomas. deserved well deserved they were like they're like eight and two since he signed um and then you had the transition to Kyrie Irving didn't work with Gordon Hayward fine whatever and then now now we're finally seeing what Tatum and Brown are they're young they're one of the best duos in the NBA uh Tatum's got to be up there for first NBA all team um he won't get he might get a couple votes this year but he's putting himself in that conversation for MVP every season moving forward right and Jalen Brown's right behind him and this duo with Robert Williams and Marcus Smart it's nuts. And you and, and you Marcus Smart's a big part of this too, right? You talk about the, the changes the, his team has made. What Ime Odoka has been able to get Marcus Smart to do or even not do when you just randomly shoot up threes and, and the complaints that everybody had about Marcus Smart, like this is what Marcus Smart's peak situation is. Point guard, pass first, set up your you set up your teammates and play defense. And if you have an open three, take it. Like, because he's been open and he's hitting his threes, but he's not taking 20 of them anymore. He's taking five or six of them, maybe 10, but like they're open because if you've noticed Diego, and this is a big part of why they're winning, their defense was elite. And that's what started this. Their offense is caught up. Their offense is one of the top ranking offenses in the league. Mm-hmm. And that's not because it's because Tatum and Brown are not just ISO balling. And that's how they're, that's not how they're scoring anymore. They're, they're, they're a well oiled machine. They're passing the ball. And, 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 and you watch these games and it's like, it's musty TV right now in the city of Boston. Yeah. I mean, the only, the only other thing that I could add to this too, is you got to remember that this year started off in the wrong foot, considering that salary cap space wise, we didn't really have much of a cap to work with. And on top of that, you also needed to be very careful as to how you spend money, considering that the luxury tax hold would apply if we went over the tax immediately after 2023. So therefore, mm-hmm. Even if this team didn't work out at all in 2022, any chances of rebuilding 2023 would have been absolutely dead in the water mm-hmm. because of that luxury tax hold. That's why you saw big moves like PJ Dozier being traded to Orlando, Ball Ball being traded to Orlando, then Schroeder to Houston, Bruno Fernando and his and his freedom to to Houston, um, Juan Chorin and Gomez to the San Antonio Spurs. Um, Evan Fournier, that the whole entire contract being moved over to the New York Knicks. It there was a lot of movement that needed to be done, and also the one big blessing that really, really, really attributed to being able to even make a couple moves in in the um, in the agency window was the Kemba Walker trade to OKC finally capitalizing in full. So. When you, when you look at this team up and down and you say, why didn't you guys go for this guy or this guy or that guy? Um, unfortunately, you know, you're looking at the wrong cap spaces if you're if you're thinking that. And that's why you really had to go with cheap contracts. I mean, Derek White, that's a $16 million contract of cap space. That, that was deeply necessary. As you can see, defensively, the Celtics have been Yeah, it's phenomenal. a big money contract, but he, he's going to be worth it. But it's well over years, though, and that that's yep. the important part. The incentive, an unlikely incentive that will probably not hit as well, that also saves us about $2 million worth of incentives there yep. between mm-hmm. him and a couple others. Yep. Um, then, you look up, then you look down and, you know, Malik Fitz, Sam Hauser, they've been moved down to a couple other uh, G League teams that allows us to be able to say, okay, if an injury really does happen, we at least have another $3 million to count on where we can sign somebody cheap, just on 10 day contract, just to, to get us there. That's yeah. why when, you know, I, I was a big advocate to get Isaiah Thomas and I started advocating this since, I, I don't even know, since, since June, I would say. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. I've been advocating that, but the more I looked down on that and what Charlotte had to offer him as a contract, um, realistically and understanding this, this team's needs, Derek White is just the, the perfect fit for this team. Mm-hmm. Offensively, he's not your three-point shooter that you're hoping for, but defensively, he's everything you could have wished for, and he is the perfect backup for Marcus Smart, especially for somebody who has been dealing with a lot of injuries but yep. has been extremely reliable when he comes back. Between Derek White and then what Peyton Pritchard has done lately, you're good. Right, Peyton yeah. Pritchard, what he has done. Look, 
yep. everyone talked about what you're trading away and all this stuff and what you did. And, you know, the trades you made gave Peyton Pritchard the chance to play. And a lot of us were preaching for him to play from day one because look how when Brad Stevens was the coach, look how much he played last year when he was a rookie. And he impacted the play last year as a rookie. And then the beginning of the year, Ime went, nope. And we're all like, wait, this dude can shoot. Why isn't he playing? And yep. he finally got a shot. And now he's in the rotation. Dude can't miss. Guys, been, uh, since the KG game, and I saw a bunch of memes like uh, Peyton Pritchard started shooting lights out right and at this moment. It was like when KG came in the locker room and like dapped him up before the game. Like that was, so they're like attributing to KG superpowers coming out. I'm like, guys, KG couldn't shoot threes. Stop with that. Um, but look, Peyton Pritchard is a big reason why this, the floor is opening up. Peyton Pritchard's knockdown shooter. Grant Williams, a.k.a. Batman, is shooting from the corner office like nobody's business right now. Um, this team is just playing really good role play ball around their two big guys. And you, you look at, you bring up Brad Stevens too and like the Kemba Walker deal that started this all. Getting rid of Kemba Walker, who's not even playing right now, and bringing back Al Horford. Um, I don't know if you saw the, the meme that's out there around Al Horford and the Ninja Turtles. Have you seen that one? No, no, I it's haven't. Per- it's perfect. It's the, it's the old, um, the top of it is like when the, uh, the old master or, or around like the young Ninja Turtles. And it's like Al, the first stint around like Rob and JT and those guys, like the first time Al was here. And then the second meme part of it is an older guy who taught them everything now needing their help. And the mighty Ninja Turtles are the ones like JT and uh, Time Lord and all this stuff. So it's like, it shows the, at the, like the, uh, presence that al had and now the student has become the teacher right in terms of the young guys and al horford's impact on this team diego has been it, it hasn't been i don't think talked about enough oh, um no. because of what tatum's doing what brown's doing what time lord's doing right marcus smart you don't really remember al horford which honestly and it's funny i, I say it that way because that's how he wants it like the day when he came here day one everyone always talked about al horford doesn't want to be the guy he wants to be a really talented player on a really good team and help you win a championship. That's what he's doing right now. He mm-hmm. doesn't want to be the one. He doesn't want to be the superstar. He wants to be a heavily involved guy who knows he's good. And, and this is what he is, right? He's not the face of the franchise here anymore. He's the first guy that opened up free agency for everybody in Boston a long time ago. But he's not the face of this franchise. He's the fifth out of five thought of the starting lineup. And he's a big reason why Time Lord is playing this good this year. He's a, I think he's a big reason why Ime Udoka's message has been able to spread across the locker room so well because he's backed it up a million times over. And then you look at Brad. Brad's got to have a chance to win exec of the year this year if this keeps working out, especially if they win everything. But you look at what they have left, and you think to yourself, okay, you play the Timberwolves Sunday, probably a win. Raptors are coming into town. You go to the Raptors on Monday, Heat on Wednesday, and they're coming off a fight, right? You, Eric Spolstra yeah. and uh, Jimmy Butler are fighting on the sideline. Right. So like, and you're only a game and a half behind them. You could, you could literally be in first place by the time the calendar turns to April. Which if you haven't seen that video, by the way, of the Spolstra and Jimmy Butler uh, Isn't it great? scaffold, it's phenomenal. Eric Spolstra sizing up to Jimmy Butler is probably the most 2022 thing you could have expected to watch. I respect Eric Spolstra. So oh, I, I love the guy. Hate, I used to, I used to hate on Eric Spolstra because when he got his go, it was uh, well, you're got LeBron James. You're some video dude who just yeah. happens to have a clipboard and you have LeBron James. So of course you're going to yeah. be good. But after they all left and that team needed to rebuild, that's when I got my respect for Eric Spolstra because that team yeah. never really sucked. And it was on him. That's why. Um, well, that guy, like Kelly, that when they a, played down there. That guy's a brilliant mind when it comes to the game. He, he really is. He's, he's shown it. Um, the only other thing that I want to just point out on the Celtics, by the way, Mm-hmm. And this is something you and I talked about. So huge shout out to the two of us. We yeah. both called we both called that Grant Williams would be a huge underdog in the times of injury for the Celtics. I'll call you and Batman, that guy, Grant Williams. I'll call you Batman. That guy is exactly what we called. Exactly that. He has been absolutely lights out. He's been the um, the dark horse that nobody saw coming. He's mm-hmm. been that underdog, and he's just writing his story into what is soon to be a very prosperous career in the NBA for that man. Yeah, it's, he's a couple years in now, and I think he's taken a lot of pride in his shooting. It's helped his game and helped him stay on the floor with this kind of team. Um, his defense is what kept him on the floor earlier on when he was a rookie and even last year. Um, Grant Williams is a piece that 
they need to keep relying on. I mean, you watched him. He he took it from Joker, right, when they were playing the Nuggets the other night. He just went up and grabbed the ball and stuffed it. Like, that dude knows how to play defense. Uh, yeah. Daniel Tice has been impactful the minutes that he's gotten. Like, that's an underrating move. Like, these little things here and there, Brad Stevens clearly, they clearly knew what they were doing, giving Brad Stevens mm-hmm. the keys to the franchise. Um, this Brad Stevens email Doko relationship is clearly going to work out, I think, based off what we're seeing. Um, and even if they don't win this year, right? Like, let's not say this is a title or bust team right now because two months ago, everyone said this is going to be a crappy team. So <laughs> I just can't help it. I know you're watching soccer. Um, and oh. <laughs> when you look at the the way this team has gone, guys, just enjoy the ride, man. This is like last year's Red Sox, Diego. Like, no one expected last year's team to be good. And everyone was like, oh, well, if they don't win the World Series. No, no, just enjoy it. Because no one expected mm-hmm. this team to be good. Enjoy the last year postseason of the Red Sox. And they might be good again this year. Who knows? Enjoy this run with the Celtics, man. Like, they deserve to be the one seed if they can get it. If not, they're going to be in a good spot going into the playoffs. Enjoy the run they can make. This team really can beat anybody right now. And they're, they're really figuring this out at the right time. Um, would I be shocked right now, Diego, if they go and win Banner 18? No, absolutely not. Would I be shocked if they don't? No. Because they might be a piece or two short. Who knows? But what I will say to this, and I mentioned this on Twitter earlier too, the championship window for the Boston Celtics is wide the fuck open. Yeah. Like it's it's wide open. Because mm-hmm. you have two young superstars, um, a top five, top six player in the NBA doing his thing right now, Jason Tatum. And you your core is young. You have Time Lord, those two guys, Marcus Smart, right? That's your core. You build around that team every year, and Brad makes his moves. Al Horford will still be here next year. You think about what the pieces are um, the, with a co- young, successful first-year coach. This window is wide open around Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Um, yeah. And it makes me just think, right, like Pierce even – Paul Pierce was interviewed somewhere and said, like, if Jason Tatum's going to win a championship as a Boston Celtic, and he's going to probably go down as the greatest Celtic to ever play the game. Yeah, and probably. Probably, yeah. It, it's And it's going to be insane. And so, look. Jason Tam is going to be one of those guys where, where, where he's done playing. It's, he's going to be an unsung, like, hands-down City of Boston favorite. Um, like the Ortiz is. He's going to be in that era. He's going to do yeah. it. Because I don't, like, that's what he's doing right now. And he's only, what, 23? Yeah. So but shout, out, shout out to uh, Danny Ainge for still making one of the greatest moves ever that he's made before he ever left the Celtics. And that was trading up to get Jason Tatum from, from Philly. The fact that he got a pick and Jason Tatum for Mark, basically not taking Mark Kelsville. He could have just taken Jason Tatum. He had the first pick. Mm-hmm. And Danny Ainge will ever have a fingerprint on this franchise outside of Banner 18. It will be Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown being Boston Celtics. Um, yep. He may be gone. He may be behind that Utah Jazz team now, but um, you can't knock Danny Ainge for what he did here. Um, and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown for every proof of what that is. So. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that real quick? Do you think do you think they get to the one seed? Do you think they get it? I think they get the the third seed. I don't think they get the first seed. I think they end up second. I think because I think right now they're they're tied for second right now. Um, I think they end up the way they're playing. I think they fall just short of that one seed. Um, I think Miami keeps it, but I think you end up the two seed and you play whoever the heck comes out of that play in series. Um, and but you have a great spot, your home court. Um, your guys play well at home and. I, th- I think I think they end up in at least the Eastern Conference final. I think that's the way they're playing right now. Um, I think that I think that that's where they end up, and then we'll see what happens from there. But um, okay, other big news in the uh, city of Boston, really in the city of Fort Myers this week. Uh, Trevor Story. If you don't know who Trevor Story <laughs> is, if you don't know who Trevor Story is, I hope um, my buddy Al Nahegan is listening to this. Al, we love you. Uh, new episode into the Triangle being recorded tomorrow, I believe, maybe. I might not be on it, but they will be. Um, Got to talk about Trevor Story, right? Trevor Story, Colorado Rockies shortstop, uh, superstar, right? Silver sluggers, gold gloves defensively. The big news was he wanted to play shortstop. He, he sees himself as a shortstop. And then the market started to fizzle, right? And Carlos Correa signed. And you had other guys signed. Freddie Freeman signed. He went, well, you know, I am willing to play second base if I'm going to win. Dude wants to win. So... The Boston Red Sox do what we didn't think they would do, what most people probably didn't think they would do. And they went out and signed Trevor Story to come play second base for the Boston Red Sox. Um, it is a six-year deal, really more like four. But 
Trevor Story is a Boston Red Sox, superstar second baseman, middle of the infield with Xander Bogarts. Uh, Xander Bogarts had a huge hand in him coming um, and recruiting him to come play. Um, very much like a, I want to win. Someone asked Xander Bogarts about it yesterday because yesterday was when they officially announced Trevor Story and had the press conference. And Xander was like, of course I asked him to come. I'm obsessed with winning. Like, I just want to win. And I'm like, can we just sign him long-term now? Like, Xander Bogarts, Rafi Devers need to be here long-term. They need to do that. Um, And Haim's saying all the right things in interviews, by the way. Like, I'll appreciate this. And I I think he means it. He is saying he wants wants Xander, Rafi, and Trevor Story here for a very long time. Um, And I think that was what they planned on when they signed Trevor Story. It was short-term. They need a second baseman. And now Kike can play center field, right? Then you got a superstar second baseman. Think about the middle infield defense. Xander and, and Trevor Story turning double plays. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. That's going to be nice. But then you also look at what this means for this team. Xander Bogarts can opt out after next summer and leave the Red Sox and be a free agent. Some people think he will. Some people think he won't. If he does, now you have insurance. Mm-hmm. Now you have Trevor Story to move over to play shortstop. Um, the latter version of this is now you have your long-term second baseman solution. Apparently, Dustin Pedroia called Trevor Story and said, you should go play second base for the Boston Red Sox. You'll have a blast. Uh, Will Middlebrooks, new and Nesson yep. analyst, co-host, called him and said, you don't want to go to New York, bro. It stinks. You're going to have a bunch of rats in your apartment. You don't want to go to New York. New York Post picked that up, by the way. Did you see that? Yeah, that was hilarious. Love that. I love that. <laughs> many times people can like shit on New York. It's great. Um, so Trevor Story was hard recruited by... Red Sox alum, current Red Sox players, hit the guy he might replace in a couple of years, Xander Bogart's called, Alex Cora called. They, the full court press has apparently been on since before the lockout. They, they were targeting Trevor Story. They got their guy. Um, and what this means for this year, this year, Diego, I think odds got, I think the over under win total was set at 84 and a half. Like, are we going to underestimate the Red Sox again? I mean, we last did year. that last year. We did that last year. A lot of people didn't think that they would go past. 90 games and they did was it a painful one yes because there was a stretch where we we're like ah oh, shit we might not even get to 80 80 games but after that it was like huh, think again there's there's a reason why in boston um the the first letter in b in, in boston is b and that b stands for belief and it's because you've got to believe on your teams no matter who they are celtics bruins Red Sox. Even New England Patriots, you have to believe. This city just is bred winning, right? Like even the Patriots next year, right? I know they're not on paper going to be as good and as everybody else, right? The AFC is just loaded all of a sudden. Um, but, you know, with Belichick and, and a young quarterback who can play, who knows? This year with the Red Sox, the core group is there. The culture is there. Um, and you bring in a guy like Trevor Story to hit God knows where in the lineup. He could hit second. He could hit first. He could hit sixth. I don't care. That dude can mash. This lineup is stacked. This lineup one through seven is really just a powerhouse. Then Vasquez mm-hmm. and Bradley Jr. rounded off. And even Vasquez on most nights is like serviceable, right? It's just Jackie Bradley Jr. If he's your everyday right fielder, that's a problem. But if your nine hole is the only issue, but he can play defense the way he does, great. That's fine. Um, so look, Trevor story, short term, great thing. You pair him with Xander this year. I think you hammered the over that win total. They're going to make the playoffs now. Like I'm, they're going to be a contender. Great. It's gonna be a fun baseball season. Long term. I genuinely hope that they don't pay him, but not pay Xander. Um, I think Rafi Devers is going to be signed. I don't think they have really have a choice there because I don't know if they have a replacement, right? Like Meyer, the mayor, the kid who they drafted to play shortstop, right? It's a long-term Xander solution, anyway. but that's a long-term plan plan. They don't have a third baseman option. Like Tristan, I mean, maybe if they really don't want to bring Devers back for some reason, Dahlbeck slides over and Cash is placed first. Like that's the only other option they have. But just pay Devers because Devers is better. Devers is a superstar hitter who can play mediocre defense, which is fine for now. And then he'll be your DH long term. So like he needs to be somebody you sign. But I think that's the plan. Do you think that they, do you think the Trevor Story signing is more of a, I want him here with Xander long term? Or are they just going to not pay Xander? I personally think that, you, that it's a long-term goal of having him and Xander, um, you know, playing together. I think at this point right now, what they're trying to do is making sure that they're walking a very safe and thin line 
again with cap space and avoiding arbitrations because the rumor is that next year for the MLB cap spaces are supposed to be increased much like the NFL. So what they're aiming to do next year, in my belief is that they'll, they'll size up the contracts on the, on the key parts of, of, of this team, but you know, pieces could get moved. People like Dahlbeck, people like Casas, people like uh, Royal could get moved around. So, yeah. You know, some of these younger pieces that will be of value might get moved around. Uh, some, some of you in the draft picks that we selected mm-hmm. this year could be moved around because they'll represent value. All that stuff will open. It, it's high blooming. You got to remember that he's a sneak, but a very good sneak when it comes to opening cap space and capitalizing at the time of most need. He just did that with Trevor's story. He just showed it that he can do that. When it needs to be big money, big signing, he'll do it. So it would not surprise me if next year he goes, <clears throat> who knows, maybe Aaron Judge decides to come to Boston. I mean, Judge's contract is due up at the end of this season. And the it doesn't look, you, think the, you think the Yankees are sick of him yet? I don't think so. I think what happens is that the Yankees stuck themselves into a hole where they're not going to be able to afford his contract extension. Mm. And therefore, one of the moves that they could do is sign a one-year deal, much like we just did with Rafael Devers to avoid arbitration, or – They'll say, all right, somebody's got to show us the bag because we just don't have it. Aaron Judge to the Red Sox would be interesting. Um, It'd be weird. I mean, it would be your power hitter for sure. God, I don't know. I I don't know what they would do. My guess is that would be your, like, DH, right? He would just stop playing the field Um, because I, I, I just don't know where he'd be. I don't know. I mean, they, I could. it would be fun. Don't get me wrong. It'd be great if he went from the Yankees to the Red Sox and then helped us win and beat the Yankees up. That'd be fun. Um, but they have so many options right now. I think the Red Sox are in a good spot. And I think what people forget is what Haim has been able to do in a short amount of time, right? Yeah. Like, Haim has been here for now a couple seasons, and everyone still just tries to remember him for the Mookie Betts trade. But it's like, that again, anyone would have had, would have had to do that. Um what you really need to consider now is like what he's done past that. You traded Mookie Betts. Verdugo has been a solid piece to what you could have gotten back from Mookie Betts. And then Jeter Downs was part of that too. Connor Wong was part. Like it was a pretty good deal for what you, you for a guy you knew you had to trade, you got a decent amount back for him, right? And, and Alex Verdugo was a big piece of what happened last year and will be a big piece of this team moving forward. Um, but now you look at what he's done. He's reboot tooled the farm system, traded guys for prospects. Like you said, maneuver numbers around mm-hmm. and he's a ninja. Like think about no one knew they were in on Trevor story until like a week before they signed the guy. And they've been talking to him since before the lockout. Yep. So like they work in the silent. I'm fine with that. Honestly, the more, the less you hear, probably the more likely at this point that Heim's going to do something right. Like how much did we hear about Freddie Freeman? He was going to the Dodgers. Yeah. But like we heard constantly that we were in on Freddie Freeman. They probably mm-hmm. weren't, or they were at least a little bit, but you didn't hear a thing about Trevor's story. Um, and Carlos Correa's name came up. He went to the Twins, right? So, like, the less you hear about a player at this point moving forward, you probably assume that Haim is in on. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that seems to be the way he functions. Now, next year, oh, I, I thought about it more. Aaron Judge, right? You put Aaron Judge in right field instead of Jackie. My God. Like, you think about that, even about that lineup. Yes! Oh, let's go. Guys, Columbus. Let's go. You I almost no. just fucking threw my arm out. <laughs> <laughs> I need Tommy John surgery. <laughs> That's it. It's over. Oh, man. Is it 1 0? Yeah, 1 0. 1 0. Oh, go. Col- I'll root for Columbia. I don't- they need, on a side note, they need to win these next two games in order to even have a small chance of getting into the World Cup. Yeah. Our chances of getting into the World Cup are like 3% at this point right now. So US that's bad. US has US has a lot better of a chance. Yes, yes. But anyways, back to uh if, back to Boston. If the, if the US <laughs> don't qual- if the US doesn't qualify, it, it'd be a dear shame at this point. It's um, a huge embarrassment, yes. Because they're in the right really good spot. Um and they have a good team. Look, the Red Sox are in a really good spot. Next year, if you put Aaron Judge in this lineup instead of Jackie Bradley, my God, like okay. Um, and then you bring in Cassis who can also hit and replace Bobby doll. Like there's a lot that could be improved on even next year. Um, but this year, Trevor story is a Boston Red Sox. It's nuts. Um, are you afraid of the whole course field thing? 
I'm not. I, I think he'll be fine. I'm not really concerned about it. Um, Chris Bryant left course, uh, went to course field. Um, and I think he's going to be fine. Like he, his numbers are insane away from it, right? So, like, well, I'm intrigued to see the other way, too, with Chris Bryant going to course field. But Nolan Arenado left course, course field, and he was playing. He's played fine with the Cardinals. So, I'm not too concerned about it. Um, dude, hit, dude mashes the crap out of the ball. I, I don't know if you are, Diego, but, like, there's a lot. Of, the, the, did you see the home run chart that's out there for all of his hits last year? Some people like overlaid all of his hits and home runs last year over Fenway Park um, that were at like course that, that were at course field. Um, for one, thank God we have a smaller ballpark because like half of um, his like flyouts, <laughs> half of Trevor's stories like flyouts to right field at course field last year were like home runs at Fenway by a long shot. So um, if anything, it's going to help because course field's a massive ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. Frank, frankly, I, I'm I'm excited for the Red Sox this year. I don't know what if there's anybody out there that isn't excited. I mean, you're just absolutely stupid at this point. Especially after last year, like clearly interested yeah. there. Fenway was rocking all last year during the playoffs and stuff. It was the loudest yep. I think I've ever heard it in a very long time. Um, I was there for a couple of playoff games, man, and I I've gone to a bunch of playoffs game, and last year it was insanely loud. I I thought I was different. gonna fall off. I I thought I was gonna fall off the bleachers at one point. Yeah, I think. You're going to see it now, too, with, like, COVID has a big impact on this, right? I think, like, everyone was so cooped up for so long. Everyone didn't have an opportunity. And now the Red Sox are in it. Um, Celtics playoffs coming up. Those are going to be insane. The crowd is going to be nuts for those. The Bruins have playoffs coming up, too. Um, The Garden is going to be nuts this postseason because of that. I think the Red Sox started it. And now it's everyone with the Patriots are going to have a chance to win a title, which is so hilarious considering they were always the ones that were like almost a guaranteed chance at a Super Bowl every year. Um, but, but yeah, no, the Celtics playoffs are going to be nuts. The Red Sox are going to be nuts this year. I think there'll be a lot more interest to regular season wise for the Red Sox this year. than there was last year um, after what happened, the Red Sox signed Trevor story, like all this stuff. So, you know, what is exciting though, Diego. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. It's uh, it's March madness. It's here. Sweet 16, Providence Friars in the Sweet 16. Yes. Crazy. Yes. Providence Friars. Um, but, you know, not everyone has a perfect bracket. But but you can have the perfect set of balls this tournament season with the sponsors of today's show. Guys, it's our friends at Manscaped. They are the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. They have just launched their ultra-premium collection to give you the total championship hygiene routine. After sweating out the games, Make sure you lather up head to toe with this all-in-one skin and hair kit to have your body and balls smelling Final Four fresh. Join the 4 million men worldwide, Diego, who trust Manscaped with the exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the code. You know it by now, CouchGuy20 for 20% off and free shipping. This is a Cinderella story. You're not going to want to miss this, guys. When the clock winds down in March, be clutch and avoid the upset with the Manscaped Ultra Premium Collection to keep everything under control. Guys, um, I live in New Hampshire for some of you who do know that, right? I can legally place bets on these games. It's been a whirlwind with all these 15 seeds, St. Mary. Uh, it's just nuts, right? Um, I'm a little sweaty after these games. And you got to you gotta take care of your hygiene, Diego. You sweat it out. You go to work the next day. You got you got to smell fresh. Thankfully, I work remote, but you don't, right? So if you don't work, if you don't smell fresh, you might get some looks at the office, Diego. You got you to smell fresh. Um, what we all know that, that how essential the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is, right? Is that for precise trim below the waist or advanced kiss safe technology reduces cuts on your basketballs. But now, but now you can enhance your big dance in the shower with the ultra premium collection. This package includes the Manscaped premium deodorant. No, not for your balls. For those stinky armpits, Diego, this deodorant dries clear, is aluminum free and smells like the Mitra scent. Hydrating body moisturizer, you have tattoos or issues with any dry skin. It's designed to keep skin feeling clean, smooth, and feeling fresh. Uh, supposedly, it works very well on like new tattoos. So we just got tatted a new tattoo. Helps out there. You get body wash as well to lather up with their infused aloe vera and sea salt shower gel. Great for summer, right? If you're showering after a nice sunburn. I haven't been out in the sun yet because it's still 40 degrees here in Boston. So I'm going to want that. Two-in-one shampoo and conditioner to clean your scalp with an easy one step. Plus, a free gift. Guys, a free gift. A three-pack set of lip balms that made up with the ingredients such as vitamin E, peppermint, uh, and some oils to keep those chappers feeling moist. That's four products and a gift 
inside the Ultra Premium Collection. What a score. All of these products are cruelty-free, Parabian-free, vegan-friendly, and dye-free. The best ingredients with zero compromise. I'd recommend using the product in this order. Diego, take notes. One, hop in the shower and scrub-a-dub-dub that body with Manscaped Body Wash. Two, lather your hair with that two-in-one shampoo conditioner to keep your noggin talking. Three, dry off and spray the hydrating body moisturizer to, to reinvigorate that dry skin. And four, put on the Manscaped deodorant for obvious reasons. Now, listen up. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code COUCHGUY20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use the code COUCHGUY20. Make sure you call on Manscaped this tournament season or your bracket won't be the only thing that's busted. And trust me, all of our brackets are busted right now. So do the right thing. Manscaped.com. COUCHGUY20. Guys, the deodorant smells good. Body wash smells good. It's just It's an easy win. And then you can trim up while you're doing all that in the shower too with the, with the lawnmower 4.0. It's a beautiful thing. All right, last topic of the night, Diego. And then we'll get out of here and go watch your boys. Um, real quick, Malcolm Butler. Super Bowl. Yo, hero. yes, sir. Super Bowl legend, Malcolm Butler. Why didn't you play in the Super Bowl? Malcolm Butler um, is back with the Patriots. Signs a two-year deal. Uh, max at like nine million bucks, I think it was, coming out of retirement. Um to play for the New England Patriots. Diego, your thoughts? Number one, nobody saw this signing happening. And the fact that nobody grabbed Malcolm Butler, shame on all of you, because that is going to be another example of don't let Bill Belichick sneak out and get hot. Um, he's done that before, and he will do it again. So welcome back, uh, Malcolm Butler, to the Patriots. Um, if you look at the quarterback position, where – I'd say if we draft another quarterback this year, we'd be pretty much all set. Um, as much as I would love to see somebody like Stephon Gilmore come mm. back to the Patriots. Mm. Won't happen. I, I, you know, I don't really think it's that much necessary. I think Malcolm Butler will be out um, in a prove it year kind of situation. So he'll, he'll get back to that mentality, mentality that he once had. I mean, honestly, the person that made, Malcolm Butler was Matt Patricia when he was the defensive coordinator here for yeah, it was Matt Patricia and Brian Flores. You know, yeah. Yeah. For the Patriots. So if there's anybody that can kind of rekindle that energy back into Butler would be Matt Patricia. So I'm not concerned on that. Um, I think what I'm truly starting to get very concerned on, and maybe I shouldn't get as deeply concerned as I am right now is um, the white receiving position. We thought for sure, I, I personally thought for sure that there would be a very good scenario. Um, and, I, and I had said this to my buddy, Al Nahigan, which, by the way, uh, I also called the Trevor Story move long ago. And he told me that I was an idiot thinking that they were going to replace Sander Bogarts. And I said, no, the idiot here is you because Sander Bogarts can actually play second base. Meanwhile, Trevor Story can actually be a short stopper. Happened to be that it flip-flopped, <laughs> but I still call Trevor Story and the Bogarts being in the Boston Red Sox. So, Al... Good luck. I'm never letting uh, that one live down. But, down. Um, but another move that I that I had thought would happen and unfortunately isn't happening is that um, I thought for sure Bill Belichick would want to move Nikhil Harry this year with the potential of maybe another pick and offer it out to Green Bay Packers for Marquez uh, Baldus uh, Scantlin. I I think Marquez would be a phenomenal fit here in the Patriots. He's fast. He can be definitely a wide receiver number one. Uh, he was serviceful for Aaron Rodgers. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we found out today that he ended up signing for the Kansas City Chiefs uh, as they completely dropped the bomb and let Terry Hill go. Uh, that was yep. just probably the most Chief-like uh, moment that could happen, but that's besides the point. So right now I'm thinking to myself, you know, um, we could potentially be pending to hear a very good deal to happen between Belichick and OBJ. And that could mean that OBJ to New England will finally happen. OBJ has not decided yet if he is staying with the Rams or looking to explore other, um, other potentials. He hasn't been given a new contract with, um, with, the Rams yeah. yet, so and they just and they just brought Allen Robinson. They just brought in Allen Robinson as well. So frankly, I mean, 
that could very well happen. So uh, I, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. But I do think that Belichick needs to find a way to address, um, bring in potentially a um, a experienced white receiver for that white receiver in one position because I don't think Nelly Aguilar will be in this year. He wasn't much of it last year. He he had a factor in certain games, but not a lot. Um, you know, we have two really good slot receivers in Kendrick Bourne and, and Jacoby Myers. Yep. We just don't have that one receiver that where we could say that we yep. can launch it down the field and we know it's going to be caught. Yep. So, and, and don't get me wrong. I think Mac has the arm to launch it down the field. It's just you got to arm him a little bit. Yeah, and I thought, like, uh, Scantling could have been a really good option. Obviously, the Chiefs are going to win that argument if you pay him money either way. Yeah. Right right now, he's going to go play with Patrick Mahomes. It's something the Patriots fans haven't been used to, right? It, you're losing arms races because you don't have Tom Brady to recruit. Like, yeah. if you're a receiver, are you playing for Patrick Mahomes or Mac Jones? You're playing for Patrick Mahomes. Uh, if you're a receiver, are you going to go play with Aaron Rodgers? It's as crazy as he is. Or are you going to play with Mac Jones? Right? Like, like this is the – are you going to play with Matt Stafford on a Super Bowl defending team? Or are you going to play with Mac Jones? Right? So – I still think OBJ probably chooses the Rams if they really want him back. Um, because even this year, right, he even said, like, you know, I almost went to the Patriots. If this was a few years ago, I would have been no-brainer to go to the Pats. Well, a no-brainer was because Brady was here. So I think he respects Belichick and would like to play for him, but it's got to be the right situation. I feel like this time it might be. Um, like this, I don't know. It's probably the best situation he's ever had when it comes to being New England. He's going to be the number one guy against a, around a guy, bunch of guys that will make sure he stays open because – if you double team OBJ with the Patriots, that ball is going to Kendrick Bourne in the slot or Jacoby Myers or one of the two or Hunter Henry, right? So they have the options if they can get the number one guy. Now, it, the one thing that's nice is that, you know, OBJ hasn't been even talked about yet. So the longer you wait, the the more it seems like Bill's waiting to pounce here on these deals, right? Look at Malcolm Butler, right? That's a deal. That's a steal. Um, and you bring in other guys like uh, the Trent Brown signing wasn't that massive of a contract, right? Because they waited. Um they brought in Leonard Fournette for a workout. Don't know why, but they did, right? Like they're starting to churn here a little bit in the motions and things like that. So, look, I, I'm not saying the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl this year. I don't, I don't think they're there. But they, if they can get a one receiver, they're a lot closer. And then draft, you know, uh, some linebackers, maybe a corner, things like that. I would, I would rather a veteran receiver than anything else. Um, and then even if you want to get a veteran receiver and then draft a guy who you think's a one. Um, that dude from Bama who's going to be out for the beginning of the year, the torn ACL. Um, that guy keeps coming up in mock drafts to the Patriots because mm-hmm. of his ACL at, at 21. Um, and that's someone that I'd be willing to take because he could play this year for one. And two, he's also a future guy for Mac long-term and who's played with Mac, right? He's a college teammate. So it's something that they have to consider. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to take another receiver in the first round after what happened with the Keel Harry. Um, so we'll see, but um, there's options for them. And I think what Patriots fans need to not do is we need to not crap on them until the draft's over. Um, yeah. Because if they have as good of a draft as they did last year, they'll be fine, right? They could draft some speedy linebackers, um, but maybe draft a corner. I wouldn't hurt. They would really probably should draft a corner. Um, and then maybe by then they, they have another receiver signed. Maybe OBJ or someone else is out there. Jarvis Landry is still out there, which I wouldn't hate. Um, you have other guys out there that, could make an impact so look i love the malcolm butler signing came out of nowhere um if you can get a couple years out of malcolm butler while you transition to a younger cornerback to lead the group it's fine um i think that's a win um if you can get stefan gilmore to come back that's even more of a win because my god then you'd be good again back there um and surprisingly he hasn't signed yet i think the chiefs popped up today as option but um the chiefs are always going to pop up as an option so um but yeah so malcolm butler Super Bowl hero back to the Pats and we'll uh, we'll see what it does. But that's uh that's Couch Guy Sports episode uh two forty five. No two forty six. Forty six. <laughs> I didn't believe myself when I said it in my head. Uh Diego, I know any final thoughts on anything we talked about tonight. Go Columbia. That's it, man. That's really it. I love it. Uh iTunes, Spotify, follow us there, couchguysports.com for all the written content. This episode will be up on YouTube. Uh, as well as wherever else you find podcasts, iTunes and Spotify. Please rate, review, subscribe, share the word, all that good stuff. Uh, and again, shout out to our friends at Manscaped. Couch Guy 20, get you 20% off with free shipping on everything. Buy whatever you want. Um, CGSN, is, this is a discount code for Shocked Energy. 
go to the site, yes, sir. Give, give them a shout as well. Um, and that's the friend of the network, right? The whole Couch Guy Sports Network. So, oh, and congrats, congrats to Diego on some more writing stuff outside of Couch Guy Sports as well. Um, the big thing Cheers I'm happy you guy. have to do, I'm happy you have to write about Chelsea. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I and I can't wait to read that content just for the fact that I know it's going to be a negative, negative experience for any Chelsea fan who wants to read it. I can't wait. <laughs> um, Couch Guy Sports Podcast. We'll be back next week. Uh, thanks, Diego. It was fun. And we'll uh, we'll talk to you then. Yes, sir.